Hey everybody, how's it going? Daryl here. So I have everybody's favorite new pixel tube right here. The Bo 192, the Titan 360 pixel tube from both lighting. This thing is awesome. But as you can notice here, there are no inputs for DMX. You have to control this thing wirelessly. And I know that this can be confusing for a lot of the newbies out there. So this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to connect this to sound switch. Okay, the first thing to do to be able to control this with DMX wirelessly is you have to set the address and you can just easily do that on the address menu. And I'm just going to keep it at the default channel one for now. You have to select the DMX mode you want. I'm going to make another video where I go over how to program this thing. And I'm going to go over the various profiles, which one I think is the most useful. Because, yeah, there's 5, 6, 7, 12, 40, 80, and 160 channel mode. We're just going to stick with 80. And then you have to select the wireless mode because this connects to normal DMX as well as W DMX, which I don't think is the best name because W DMX sounds like an abbreviation for wireless DMX, but it's actually a completely different protocol. Just kind of like how HTTP and HTTPS, like you see on your web browser, they both serve you a page but they are completely different protocols behind the scenes. Yes, I did just let my nerd flag fly. So to demonstrate this in sound switch, I'm just going to show you that I have a brand new project. These are the default auto loops. I have no fixtures imported just to show you. So you click this plus button right here, select both as your manufacturer, and then just type in tube and you'll be able to find it. And as you can see here, there are four different profiles. And if you remember earlier, I chose the 80 channel mode. And like I mentioned in a different video, I'll go over each of these and advantages and disadvantages of them. So you can add multiple of them, but it's not going to add them as a group because pixel mappable fixtures in SoundSwitch are treated as a group. And right now, SoundSwitch does not have a group of groups functionality. So we're just going to add one. So for this example, I'm only adding one fixture and you can assign all of your fixtures to be on channel one so they'll all do the same thing. But if you want them to do chases between each other, you need to give all of them unique addresses. And here we go. I have my pixel tube and it is on channel one and it is ready to go. When you have individually addressable zones in a pixel mappable fixture like the Bo tube 192, it treats it as a group. So there's this top level group right here. And then there's the 16 individual zones and there's 16 of them in 80 channel mode, which is what I like. So it's similar to some of my other pixel lights. All right, this is basically ready to go. So I have sound switch set up. I have my light fixture set up. Now I need to have the two talk to each other. So I have my sound switch dongle right here. You can also use the control one for this, but I'm just using this for this demo. I'm going to plug this into my laptop and I have this Donner wireless DMX transmitter. Donner dongle, I refer to it sometimes. And I'm going to plug this in to my sound switch dongle. Any signal that comes out of the sound switch dongle into wireless DMX and it just broadcasts it. And make sure that sound switch sees the hardware. Sometimes you have to restart the software. So to do so, I'm going to go ahead and click on this gear icon, go to the hardware tab, and then it says DMX and ArtNet. No DMX device found. So that's not good. Let's go ahead and restart the software. Okay, software restarted. Okay, it looks like it found it. There we go. And we're good with just universe one right now. Go ahead and select an auto loop and just have it play. When this is successfully paired to my Donner dongle, I will know because this will start doing the actions of this auto loop. Okay, so I turn it on. And so it's blinking green. And on the screen, there is a blinking dot, which means that it is connected. So we set it all up and it's just automatically working. So yeah, very cool. This is corresponding with the auto loop I have. And so let me go into like the advanced functionality of DMX as well, because it's working and that is great, but there's a few other things I want to show you. With wireless DMX in general, you can have different channels. So you see my transmitter is blinking red. That means it's on the red channel. I can change the color. So if I go to like a different ID, like ID four and I click enter, See his weight, it's setting it, and see that is blue. So it's not on the red channel anymore, so it is no longer connected, it's no longer blinking green. If I go to like five, it says weight, and it's like the purple channel. So I could also sync my Donner dongle 
to be like purple or ID5 and it will connect to this, but just to keep it simple, let's keep it on red. So wait, ID1, there we go, it's blinking green again. That means it works. And so that is normal DMX. So if you click long press enter, you can choose the protocol. So there's GZ, which I think is just normal wireless DMX, and then there's RD. Right now, so I think that is WDMX, the Swedish protocol they call it. And so it's not blinking green, that means it's not connected. So if we restart this, it means it's not connected. So let me go ahead and plug in my WDMX transmitter and let's try to get this to work. Okay, so I have my Blizzard Lightcaster WDMX transmitter, which I have a review on my YouTube, but I think this one is discontinued, but they have other ones and they all work pretty similarly. I'm gonna keep my sound switch dongle connected to my laptop. I'm gonna unplug the Donner dongle, which is only used to control like normal wireless DMX fixtures. I'm gonna plug this into my Lightcaster, into the DMX in, and there we go. And so I have to connect this light to it. So part of the WDMX protocol is that you have to pair your light to the transmitter. So your transmitter will have like a function button usually. So you long press it and then it will usually have like a blinking light, which means it's ready to pair. So you only have a few seconds. The menu options will be a little bit different when I click up and down. So I'll go into pairing right here. And like I showed before, I'm going to click on this button on my transmitter. You see the blinking light and there you go. As you can see in the pairing menu, it shows that it is paired and it is connected. Let's go ahead and restart this. So we should expect it to be connected and doing our auto loop. There we go. It's connected with WDMX. Pretty nifty. So that's awesome. We're able to have it connected, but it's a lot more fun if we like show like a pixel mappable style effect. So let's change this type of fixture to a pixel mappable one. And right now it's being treated as a wash primary. So let's do multi-cell primary and let's go ahead and click the auto button. Let's do dance auto loop, why not? Then here we go. Here's see it's individual addressable zones. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And if you found it helpful, please smash like and subscribe. I try to create helpful content for you guys. And I'm gonna be doing a different video, doing a full review of this thing. And I'll tell you my thoughts about it, going over more of the functionality. And I'll be doing another video, just showing like the best practices for programming this, going over the different profiles and telling you which one I think is the best because they all have their pros and cons. I chose 80 for this video, but there are benefits to the other ones as well. So without further ado, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video.